and welcome. Namaste. Time series analysis, the method of least squares, fitting of linear trend, and now we are going to discuss a problem with even number of years or even number of periods. There is not much difference in the cases having odd number of years and even number of years. The biggest difference is in case of odd number of years, there can be a single year in the middle of the data. That means the origin can be only a single year. But in case where there are even number of years, there can be no single year as a middle year. Because in this case, see, there are two middle years. Otherwise, four and four, exactly in the middle, you can, we cannot select any one year. Then what? It's very easy to get the origin when there are odd number of years. But in case of even number of years, we use the idea of mean of the two middle years. Because origin should be a single year. So, if there is no single year as a middle year, we have to take the mean or arithmetic mean of the two middle years as the origin of the time series. That is the biggest difference between the cases having odd number of years and even number of years. Another thing, let me clarify that I am not fully agreed with this technique, but in many or most of the Indian and Asian reference books on statistics, this technique has been discussed and that's why I am discussing or I am going to discuss this technique. Otherwise, as a student, as a teacher, I don't prefer to use this technique of change of scale. In case of odd number of years, remember we had taken x as year minus origin divided by interval. It is not compulsory to divide it by interval. When there are even number of years, it is suggested that x will be year minus origin and origin is the arithmetic mean of two middle years divided by half of interval. This is something unusual or different and that's why I am going to discuss this in this case. Actually because of this only I have selected this problem. Otherwise only the point of origin is different. So I think it is not necessary to discuss the case having even number of years separately even but because of this only we are going to study this case okay now let's start the time series is given here in the year and the value y summation is 734 that is sigma y for us now first of all origin will be 2012 and 2000, sorry, mean of 2012 and 2013, that is 2012.5. Actually, this is nothing, it is something like the day exactly between these two years. So you can take 31st December or 1st, 31st December 2012 or 1st December 2013 as the origin, to be more precise. It's okay. Now, X will be year minus 2012.5 divided by half interval this is not compulsory to divide by interval or half interval please remember so let's find x for the year 2009 it will be 2009 minus 2012.5 upon half interval means 0.5 because interval is of one year only. So it will be minus 3.5 divided by 0.5 so it will be minus 7. Similarly 2010 minus 2012.5 will be minus 2.5 divided by 0.5 means minus 5. 2011 minus 2012.5 minus 1.5 divided by 0.5 is minus 3. Similarly minus 1 here it will be 1. 3, 5 and 7, positive 16, negative 16, sigma x comes to 0, it must be 0, that is also a very small checkpoint for you the students or even the teachers, I also use personally these kind of checkpoints, 
Now x y 18 to minus 7 minus 560. 19 to minus 5 minus 450. 92 into 3 minus 276. 83 into minus 1 minus 83. 94 into 1, 94, 99 into 3, 298, sorry, 98, 97, 92 into 5, 460 and 104 into 7, 728, the positive total comes to 1579 and the negative total comes to 1360. Nine. So 210 is sigma xy. And one more column we need is x square. 7 square 49, 5 square 25, 3 square 9, 1 square 1 and same in reverse order. 75 plus 10, 85, 85 plus 85, it will, sorry, 49, 25. So it will be 74 plus 175, 84, 84 plus 84, 168 sigma x square. Sometimes because of hurry, I also made small mistakes. But you please take care. Actually, I should take care also. Hmm. Now what? Yes, one more thing I would like to explain. If we don't go for change of scale by dividing the difference by half of the interval, this will be 3.5, 2.5, sorry, negative 3.5, negative 2.5, negative 1.5, negative 0.5, positive 0.5, positive 1.5, positive 2.5, positive 3.5. And the values will be accordingly different. Okay, now what? Hmm. Let's find out the values of A as well as B. And to find the value of A, we use the first normal equation sigma y equals to n a plus b sigma x. I already discussed how to arrive at this equation. Just get the summation of the variables in this standard equation. We get the first normal equation and since A is a constant, sigma with a constant number becomes n. Now sigma y is 734, n is 8 and sigma x is always 0. So ultimately it comes to 8a equals to 734. Therefore a equals to 734 divided by 8. Therefore a equals to 91.5. Ninety one point seven five. Okay, now the second equation is very simple. Multiply the first normal equation by x, and we get the second normal equation. Sigma y into x will be sigma xy. A a is actually sigma a. Therefore, now it will be a into sigma x plus b into sigma x square. Let's substitute the values. Sigma xy is 210. Sigma x is 0. Sigma y square is 160. Sorry, sigma x square is 168. So ultimately this is 168b equals to 210. Therefore b equals to 210 upon 168. So b is again positive and that is 1.25. B is positive that means the values increases and V1.25 indicates the average rate of rather annual rate of change and change is increased so every year the value increases by a constant rate of 1.25 but we cannot ignore A why is a plus bx that means y is 91.75 plus 1.25x in this particular time series 
Now in this time we are going to we are not going to find out all trend values we are just going to find out the estimate for 2017 estimated value of y for the year 2017 first of all we have to find out the value of x for 2017 2017 minus 12.5. 2012.5 divided by 0.5. It will be 4.5 divided by 0.5. So it will be 9. Yes. Estimated value of y for the year 2017 is 91.75 plus 1.25 into 9. That is 91.75 plus. 1.25 into 9 is 11.25. So estimated value of y for the year 2017 is what is it? 91 plus 11, 102 plus 1, 103. Now it is your assignment to find out the trend values of all eight years on the basis of. This straight line equation. You just need to substitute value x for each and every year. The result will be estimated value of y for all these years, and they are known as trend values. That's it. Thank you very much.